Hello, welcome to Daily Prayer today for July 28th, 2020. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Redeeming God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism you have clothed us in your grace and made us heirs of your promise. By the power of your Holy Spirit, set us free from all that we fear and let us live according to our faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our readings for today are Psalm 54 and 146. Judges 2, 1 through 5 and 11 through 23, Romans 16, 17 through 27, and Matthew 27, 32 through 44. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the insolent have risen against me, the ruthless seek my life. They do not set God before them. Selah. But surely God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will repay my enemies for their evil. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Today we are starting the um, the book of Judges, which is immediately after um, Joshua. And let me just give you a quick uh, overview of that. So after the book of Joshua, Joshua dies. And um, the people do well in the sight of God for a while until all of those elders die out. And then... Not only is Joshua ended, but also Judges is begun with this statement that the people do what is right, whatever is right in their own eyes. And so we now will have um, sort of this pattern of people not doing what they're supposed to be doing, and then God raising up enemies for them and raising up leaders, judges, um, who are not only people who hear cases like a judge that we're used to, but also sort of military leaders. And um, they are called by God and lead people back to righteousness. And then we have that kind of as a repeating pattern. So let's look at the first one. One of my favorites. It's a fun one. So now the angel of the Lord went up from Gilgal to Bochen and said, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you into the land that I had promised to your ancestors. I said, I will never break my covenant with you. For your part, do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. Tear down their altars. 
but you have not obeyed my command. See what you have done. So now I say I will not drive them out before you, but they shall become adversaries to you, and their gods shall be a snare to you. When the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the Israelites, the people lifted up their voices and wept. So they named that place Bochim, and there they sacrificed to the Lord. Then the Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and worshipped the Baals. And they abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They followed other gods from among the gods of the peoples who were all around them and bowed down to them, and they provoked the Lord to anger. They abandoned the Lord and worshipped Baal and Astartes. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he gave them over to plunderers who plundered them, and he sold them into the power of their enemies all around, so that they could no longer withstand their enemies. Where, Whenever they marched out, the hand of the Lord was against them to bring misfortune. So the Lord, as the Lord had warned them and sworn to them, and they were in great distress. Then the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the power of those who plundered them. Yet they did not listen, even to their judges, for they lusted after other gods and bowed down to them. They soon turned aside from the way in which their ancestors had walked, who had obeyed the commandments of the Lord. They did not follow their example. Whenever the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge And he delivered them from the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For the Lord would be moved to pity by their groaning because of those who persecuted and oppressed them. But whenever the judge died, they would relapse and behave worse than their ancestors, following other gods, worshiping them and bowing down to them. They would not drop any of their practices or their stubborn ways. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he said, Because this people have transgressed my covenant that I commanded their ancestors, and have not obeyed my voice, I will no longer drive out before them any of the nations that Joshua left when he died, in order to test Israel, whether or not they would take care to walk in the way of the Lord as their ancestors did. The Lord had left those nations, not driving them out at once, and had not handed them over to Joshua. From Romans chapter 16, verses 17 through 27. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to keep an eye on those who cause dissensions and offenses in opposition to the teaching that you have learned. Avoid them, for such people do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the simple-minded. For while your obedience is known to all so that I rejoice over you, I want I want you to be wise in what is good and guileless in what is evil. The God of peace will shortly crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my co-worker, greets you, and so do Lucius and Jason and Sosopater, my relatives. I, Tertius, the writer of this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother, Cordus, greet you. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. And from Matthew chapter 27, verses 32 through 44. As they went out, They came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross, and when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. 
And they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, we have the beginning of, uh, of Judges, and I sort of told you a little bit about it, what it was, and actually I forgot that that's what the book of Judges does. It sort of sets the scene. This is an editorial note. It's an introduction to the, the story itself, and it tells us very clearly. So this is what we're going to read. The people are going to choose poorly, and they'll come back to God, and then God will raise up a judge, and then they'll go back to it again. And there's this pattern over and over and over that the people do evil in the sight of God. And the main way that they do this is they go after, they start to worship Baal or the Baals. Um, Baal is one of sort of the general names in the ancient Near East for God, but it it speaks specifically to a a sort of family, a set of of gods, um, Baal, and and there would be sort of various local manifestations, but it was kind of the the general Canaanite god. Um, They would worship these gods because this is that god's land. That was kind of the mindset. So I might as well cover all my bases. I'll worship the living God. I'll worship Yahweh God. Sure. But I'm also going to worship the Baals. I'm going to worship um, the Astra. Astra was the this goddess of kind of fertility. Um, there was very sort of sexual implications to her worship. Um, she usually had um, her worship sites were sort of on top of, of hills and um, with large pillars sticking up into the sky in very uh, suggestive kind of manner. Um, And all of these people would go and they would worship these other gods um, sort of in addition to the living God, or sometimes eventually they would get to the point where they're just worshiping these other gods. And so God uses all of these these peoples that are here still in Canaan Um, and raise them up as enemies so that they can treat, uh, that call the Israelites back to worship of God. We see sort of, again, the long game of what's going on here, that that God has allowed these other nations to remain so that there would be this sort of refining that they would... um, continually have to come back again. Uh, it's, it's very similar to that sort of every generation has that chance to, uh, to, to reclaim. And this is what happens over and over. Each generation has another chance to, to come back to God, to understand God, to worship God. And it may last for that generation, but then it doesn't go so well. And so the next generation has another opportunity, a chance to do that. Um, many, including myself, are claiming that this uh, coronavirus and all of this is is another chance for us as the people of God, as as um, as disciples of Jesus Christ, to come back to our worship, to understand who God is, to understand who we are and whose we are. All of these things, God can use every opportunity, every chance to bring us back to. Uh, to worship him. And this is the same way. Um, We will see this over and over through the book of Judges, um, exactly what that looks like for these people. Then we have um, the end. This is the very end of the book of Romans. And we get a glimpse of kind of the staff. We see the the people who are behind the scenes. There's 
um, first Paul encourages them not to, to have all this dissension and these people who might try to drive them apart, but to, to be of like mind. Um, but then greetings from all of these people who are, who are working. At this point, uh, Paul is not in jail, I think, at this point. I'd have to look at that. But he sends word from Timothy, who he's been working with, uh, from all of these other, the, the local treasurer for the town, all of these other, there's, there's, there are Roman names, there are Jewish names. All of these people send these great greetings. There's someone else who's writing this in the first place, actually um, sort of as a scribe setting these things down. Um, it takes a lot of people behind the scenes to make these things happen. And Paul is writing and sending all of these greetings from all of these people to this church in Rome that he has not ever met before. Um, just a, a wonderful glimpse into the, the wonderful connectedness that we have as the people of God. That's something that we as Presbyterians kind of hold on to. We're connected to one another in presbyteries and, and share with one another. We get to gather together at things like uh, General Assembly, where we can come together and, and love one another and share in the work that we are here to do. We can work together in ecumenical things, you know, with, with our brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ um, to, to work together to do the work that God has called us to do. Um, and we can share with Catholics and, and uh, Lutherans and Methodists and Baptists and, you know, all, all the different various people um, and ways and, and uh, bodies that God has called us to be in uh, to, to do God's work. And that's a wonderful thing to do. Anyways, that's another mini sermon. Then we'll go on to Matthew. And we have, of course, Jesus actually being crucified. We have his burden being carried by another. How, how poignant that is, that he who is bearing the sins of all of the world, someone else is actually carrying that cross. A reminder that we do not do things alone. We are, we are with one another in this. He is crucified, um, which is just, I mean, it's a very, and then, and then they crucified him and stuck him on this thing. Um, and he's surrounded by these people who are not very supportive, right? The only support that they give is they give him some, offer him some wine mixed with gall. This was a, um, a dulling, uh, 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 like a pain blocking sort of thing so that he wouldn't go through all of that, right? Or he wouldn't care as much and he refuses it. He says, no, I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to feel all of this. Um, and then he is mocked by um, the highest and to the lowest. He is mocked by scribes and priests and Pharisees. And he is mocked by fellow criminals who sit be be beside him. His clothes are separated, um, cast in lots. We're not given the reference here to to why that is significant, uh, but a, a, someone well-read in the Old Testament might recognize that that's part of the, what we are expecting to see from, from Messiah. And Jesus is crucified, hung on the cross, and we will see what happens as, as time goes on as we go on through this week. Those are our readings for today. Let's go ahead and gather together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, we praise you for your mighty love given in Christ's sacrifice on the cross and the new life we have received by his resurrection. Especially we thank you for ministries of teaching and pastoral care. those who work to help and heal. Sacrifices others have made for our benefit. Opportunities for our generous giving.
the presence of Christ in our weakness and suffering. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? With joy, we uh, thank God that Louise F. has been um, moved to the rehab facility at, um, at Jefferson East, or East Jefferson Hospital. Uh, we thank God that she is continuing to be better. There was some confusion on Sunday. Uh, my Louise, uh, Louise, my wife, um, was not feeling so well on Sunday morning, but we're talking about a different Louise here. Also, Bruce and Barbara, who are moving to California. God of grace, let our concern for others reflect Christ's self-giving love, not only in our prayers, but also in our practice. Especially we pray for the church in Latin America. A right relationship between humans and the earth. Those who are wounded or face death. Those who keep watch over the sick and dying. All who speak up and take action for what is right. People of God, for what else do we pray? We lift up Amy, Amy and Jeffrey and her father. We lift up Greg. And we lift up Betty from our uh, from my previous church. who are all recovering from COVID. We pray for all those affected by coronavirus, COVID nineteen, both directly and indirectly. We also continue to lift up Linda. La, as uh, she recovers. Almighty God, you have made us in your image and crowned us with honor and glory. Shape us by your word and fill us with your spirit that we may live as your beloved children and proclaim your saving love to our life's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to use the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, like good stewards of the grace of God, let us serve one another with whatever gifts we have received. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for Daily Prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else. Click on the subscription and the notification button if you have not done so already. For more information, go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, excuse me, johncalvinchurch.org, and find out more about worship times and what we're doing. You can also leave your prayer requests there and let us know about what's going on. Um, our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition. Our readings came from the... Um, 
uh, Reform Common Lectionary, Daily Lectionary Readings, and more new Revised Standard versions of the Bible. Thanks so much for joining me today. Join us next time, and we'll see you next time.